Hey everybody. So today I just want to talk to you about how you feel about your life. So for so many years I was so busy and I thought, you know, I remember being 15 and 18 and 22 and 32 and 42 and so on. <laughs> Not telling you my age. Anyway, so I remember going through all these years in such a rush, thinking I was never going to have enough time. I didn't want to sleep because it would took too much time. I didn't want to eat because it would take too much time. And I was always in a rush. Have you ever felt like that? Like you just don't have enough time or that you just can't fit in everything? Well, I look back on that and I realize just how much time I do have. And I would encourage you to slow down and actually just enjoy the moments. Because what happened to me is I wound up getting sick. And I was working like crazy and trying to do my best for my company. Um, you know, they, they say, you know, with men they say, oh, he's a real company man, you know. Well, I was a real company gal, you know. I, I would bring my work home. I would, you know, go in early. I would stay late. I would really put the company... Um, you know, it, it, as one of my top priorities, whatever company I was working for. And that's not a bad thing. That's, that's fantastic. But the problem with that is, is that when I did that, I was also, you know, a, a mom, I was, had my own home, I had my own car. So I, there was a lot of things that I had to take care of on my own that is not a good thing, <laughs> you know, and I didn't realize at the time, you know, what life was like in, in getting help, um, you know, and reaching out to, to people, even if I had to pay them, I probably should have done that and just got some assistance, um, with whatever I had going on, but I didn't, I was, you know, um, <laughs> crazy fool and I just wanted to do it all myself. And so, you know, I look back and, I think what happened was that, you know, tonight I'm actually really reflecting on that because I just got notice that um, for the mm, eighth year now, um, I am still cancer free. So, uh, and it makes me think about how life used to be and how it is now and how drastically it has changed. Not, well, not, I suppose not drastically, like physical location has changed drastically in various times, as some of you know, but my outlook on life has changed. Like I have really strived to slow down. I have tried to realize that I have time ahead of me and I've tried to actually really enjoy every single day of my life because <clears throat> I think when you go through something so serious um, and it, and it reoccurs. So it's not just a one time thing. It, it, it came back and I wound up with cancer twice. And I took it very seriously the second time. Um, although I did battle with it, I, you know, I, the first time when I was diagnosed, I told the doctor, I said, I don't have time for this. And she said, You don't have time not to deal with it. And I said, no, I, I really don't have time to deal with this. I'm, it's just going to have to wait. And she insisted. I did not have time to do that and then that it was time for me to stop and take care of myself. And so I took it a little seriously, um, changed a lot of things that I was doing, changed some of my eating, not all of it, but some changed, um, you know, various different things that I was, I was intaking into my body or things that I was using on my body. Um, got more exercise, started going to the gym, you know, lost some weight and, you know, life was starting to look up. Well, then it came back. And so I changed even more. I took it a lot more seriously the second time. And I, um, at that point became vegan for two years. Uh, I do highly recommend that. I, cu I couldn't tell you, like it's a very hard lifestyle to keep up, but it's definitely worth it. I wound up feeling so light within my body and clean like and I can't really describe that but I really felt clean I wasn't heavy I didn't feel this heaviness inside even in my mind like it just lightened my entire system which was amazing 
So I do recommend it. Um, and, and I eat more now. Um, I eat more vegetables than I do meat products um, on a regular basis. I try not to do any kind of lunch meats unless I'm in a super, super hurry or I know that something's coming up and I have to um, just grab a sandwich. But most of the time, I don't eat lunch meats. Um, I don't eat any kind of like massive processed foods. Um, you know, I still struggle with some things. You know, we all do. But, you know, this is this is the kind of thing, like I started drinking alkalized water, um, and just slowing my lifestyle down and just realizing that that had things gone differently, right? Or had I been of a different personality, I might not be here right now. And I realize that, you know, and I, I appreciate every breath that I have every single day. And, and I don't know whether m- most people feel that way. I guess they probably don't. We all go through life. We, we, strive for something more we we push and we um you know we're we're working like crazy and that's great you know it's it's good to work it's good to strive and want more and build more and want to achieve more but it's also just as great to build the time into your life to take care of you and then on top of that as you're building that time into your life whether it means you get up early or you stay up later or you use what uh, Tony Robbins actually refers to as net time, which is no extra time, um, which is like driving in the car and you're learning something new or you're listening to a book or a podcast or something that, that brings, you, um, brings you either knowledge or, um, or spiritual um, information, anything like that. Just to boost your your mind and um, give you information that you need to be able to do better in your life. So, with all of these things, right? It it builds this appreciation. You know, the more that you throw into your own life, the more that you invest into your own life, the more you're going to appreciate every single day you have, because. You know, you can look forward to getting up early in the morning and listening to that favorite podcast you have, or you can get up early in the morning and, you know, pray to, to God and, you know, build, start to build that relationship with God and with Jesus in order to, um, help you and move you forward, you know, or have that relationship with the Trinity, the Holy Spirit as well. Um, you know, right now our world just spins out of control sometimes, you know, and I watch people do it. A lot of people are unhappy. They even, even folks that have money. So if, if you're listening to me and you don't have money, I want you to be assured that you almost have it easier. And I know that doesn't seem, that seems so far out of the, the realm of possibilities, but it's true. Folks that have money, tend to, oh, they have to work really hard, right? Most of the time and, and they enjoy it. So it's something that they enjoy. However, it, they have to make really hard choices as well. So it's not, it's not an easy path for them either, you know? So, well, neither here nor there, but I would just say to you that like when you are when you're starting to change your life and you're starting to build something new, when you're, when you're looking to want to get up every single day, start with gratitude and start with some, some things that you might enjoy. And like I started with the, like a gratitude journal, which I've talked about many, many times. It was the best thing I ever did. Um, and it changed my brain. You know, it really did. It started me to appreciate the things that were around me than the things that that were outside of me, uh, outside of my world and started me thinking about things that I, you know, should appreciate or, or could appreciate in the world. And that's only going to breed positivity and, um, goodwill within your, within your own body, which brings health. So I, I think a lot of these things are all interconnected. 
you know, I think the one of the reasons that I have been able to maintain this um, uh, this diagnosis as you know being clean from all of this stuff that I went through is because I've really made it a point to put myself first to make sure that I'm taking care of my health, my body, my mind, um, in and feed it with things that are positive, not negative, and know that that every single moment is a gift for me, right? Like if I was to go tomorrow, you just need to know that every single moment from that time of my life, which has been about eight or nine years now, um, has been a gift, every single moment of it, whether it has been good or not, because many have not been good. Many moments have been very, very stressful in the last eight years, but I still woke up every day knowing that I belonged and knowing that I wanted to be here, knowing that I wanted, of course, there was a couple days where I was begging for him to take me, but he didn't. And I woke up the next day and, you know, the next day I, I appreciated every moment that I had, you know, and that's not easy to do. It's not, but it takes that that time to really focus on what you want to do, focus on the things that make you happy, you know, just bring some joy into your life. There's nothing wrong with that. I always thought that I had to take care of everybody else and that once there was time, I would take care of myself. And I was grateful and happy if I got a a bath, you know, and was able to stay in there for more than 10 minutes. Um, You know, and that happened on occasion, but it's like taking care of yourself is a lot more than just taking a bath. It's really just like taking the right vitamins, eating properly, um, which I don't always do, but I try. Um, it's thinking properly, which I don't always do, but I try. Um, and it's learning to, to ask others for help, you know, um, it's learning to be truthful with your, with your path and with your goals and with yourself, you know, and I think finding the things that you really enjoy, like I said, to bring that joy, that happiness into your life. If you like adventure, build some adventure into your life. And I know I do. If you like to, um, paint, then buy an easel, spend that 40 or $50 on yourself to buy the easel to, and get some, paints and things that you enjoy and find an hour that you can spend time doing that a day or a week, whatever you can afford. But, you know, like there's so many people that are out here, they're negative, they're, um, they're wanting to, to end it. They don't want to be here anymore. They're allowing others to affect them negatively. Um, whether that be through emotional abuse, whether it be through, um, gaslighting, whether it be through, you know, um, spiritual attacks, whatever is going on in your life. I've, I've been through all of it. I know what it can be like, and I know it can be really, really difficult and it can weigh super heavy on your heart and it can weigh even heavier on your mind. But when you process it, and you realize every single day that you're still waking up and that you have the opportunity to do things differently every single moment of every single day, you start to realize, well, shoot, you know, like, what am I letting these people get to me for? Why am I, why am I wallowing in this sorrow? You know, things are painful, yes, but we have to be able to move past that. We have to be able to put it aside and put it away and let it go. Even if you don't get answers, you know, one of the things that I realized is, you know, why, and and this was very early on, long, long time ago before the most stressful situations occurred in my life, which was good because I was able to walk away from these things without needing answers. Um, and a lot of people can't do that. I couldn't when I was younger, you know, in my probably early twenties, it was really difficult for me to let things go and not understand why they had to be let go or, 
um, not understand why the relationship couldn't work or not understand why the job and I couldn't couldn't really mesh things together, why, why we were button heads. And I think it's these kinds of situations, you know, when you're dealing with other personalities, you have to realize that if you're in a situation where you really truly believe that you are the sound mind in, in the situation, trust and believe that you're not going to get sound answers from someone who is not um, reliable, who's not truthful, who's not um, someone who is, is a value in your life right? So the best thing you can do is just walk away and not worry about getting those answers. And I know a lot of people, that's where a lot of people get stuck. You know, why did she do that to me? Why did he do that to me? Well, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter. You got to let it go for your own mind, for your own health, for your own safety. Sometimes you have to just walk away and realize that some things just don't work out. And that's okay. On to the next. On to the next adventure. On to the next uh, job. On to the next person. On to whatever. You know, just just move move forward and keep moving forward. You know, I looked back so many times in my life, and I think after when I got when I got sick, I realized I was on my own, um, and that was hard. That was really. That was a crappy thing to go through and to go through alone. Um, But I did, and for the most part, you know, I was by myself. And I look back and I'm like, you know what? If I could get through all of that, then there's nothing that can stop me. You know, and I can enjoy my life going forward. And so that's what I've been doing. You know, I've been looking for things that bring me peace, that bring me happiness, that make me laugh, that, um, you know, just bring me a sense of accomplishment, whatever it is that, you know, at that moment that I'm looking for, bring me some adventure into my life. And <laughs> I'm not into like roller coasters or anything like that. So it's not adrenaline I look for. It's just adventures, like learning things and, um, understanding the world differently right and locations and whatever I just love that but I think there's so much there's so much lawlessness in the world right now there's families being broken to pieces and I want to remind you that if you are around my age which is above 40 (laughs) um I want to assure you that if you're having trouble with your children right now, that they have been led down a different path than any past generation has ever been led down. It, there has been information shared with these young adults, um, 18 to 35, 38. There has been so much information that has been shared with these young adults and opportunities uh, I say opportunities very very loosely because it it winds up not being um, a true opportunity but they think it is and so these things have been presented to these young adults and they think it's a good thing they think that they're going to get ahead maybe they're getting paid to to say or do or be a certain way and in the end, it's going against their own family, their loved ones, their friends. And so it's, it's a lot of um, sinful behavior, and it's a lot of butting heads with others behind the scenes. And I feel badly for them because they don't know any different. You would think that they would. You know, I've seen a lot of parents suffering because of it, but they don't. You know, um, this has been a long game for whatever groups had planned this, you know, and it started off, well, probably started off a lot sooner than this, but it started off with the um, dropping off of methamphetamines all across the nation and um, infiltrating small towns, just taking them over and causing our young adults, you know, such 
trauma and um, addiction and suffering through that, you know, and then if they got through it, their relationships are broken, their family ties are just totally disintegrated or really broken. Um, and these children, young adults, have abilities that we never we never were had that opportunity to develop when we were their age. We were we were doing things that covered it all up. They were doing things that were waking it all you know, the complete opposite. They were waking it all up. Um, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's more of a spiritual awakening, right? So our young adults are more spiritually awake than we ever could have been at that age, ever. And I say could have been because many of us were partaking in, um, you know, drugs, sex, rock and roll, whatever, um, alcohol, all of it. You know, we're living, we were living crazy, living hard. And these guys, they started off that way, but it ended really differently for them than it ever did. Like I said, I think any generation, maybe the 70s a little bit with LSD and things like that, but this was, uh, this was far greater. And so I would just say if you're a parent of these young adults, give them, give them some leeway, give them some, give them some understanding and love them through it because they're going to need it. They are. And so do you, you know, life wasn't supposed to be all like that. It just wasn't. We're supposed to enjoy our time. That's what Jesus and, and God wanted for us. He wa They wanted us in the Garden of Eden. They wanted us in this beautiful garden, sharing our lives with him in heaven and um, living our days, just enjoying life and being free. And that's not where we're at right now. That's where we're going. We're heading that way, but we've still got a long way to go. You know, I think that after everything that I had been through as far as like the physical illness that I had, the cancer, um, I do see I do see God as being the great physician ultimately. I always look for more of the natural solutions before I go to the doctor. So I try to fix things on my own. I don't know if that's what you do or not, but if you don't, I would recommend, you know, learning more about the herbs, learning more about what the earth has to offer to you and and investing some time in in that and investing time in the word of God and learning how um, his word can actually boost your self-esteem and it can give you like a comfort like you've never had before. You know, if you if you dive into the word, that's that's where you're going to find when you are, when you're struggling with anything, whether it be health, whether it be family d troubles, whether it be relationship problems, whatever it is, or if you're worried about politics or you're worried about your job, anything, it's all in the Bible. And if you pick that up and you read it you, and you do that on a regular basis and you build that into your life, um, and you do it on, like I said, on a regular basis. Try to do it daily. If you can't do it daily, at least every other day. Um, build some time into diving into the Word and, and pray. You know, spend some moments by yourself just enjoying that moment with yourself and the Lord. And you will start to build a relationship with Him. And He will guide you. You'll be surprised. He will start to guide you on the things that you need to know on your path. And He'll illuminate sort of the verses that you that will be meaningful for you and so I don't know these are all the things that that all kind of came about from me being sick and I know that seems strange right because a lot of people will get cancer and they just kind of fade away and they um you know they just they feel broken and I did I you know it started there I did feel broken but, um, and I was angry, I was super angry, but I didn't want to stay there, you know, and I, I encourage you not to stay there. If you're in that situation, seek help, 
you know, I give uh, Reiki and there's plenty of other people that, that can do that. There's people that can pray with you. I can do that with you as well. Whatever you're looking for, um, reach out to people, you know, and if you're not sure what you really need, reach out and talk to somebody. Maybe that you, you need, just need some advice or somebody to just listen to you. You know, you don't have to go through all the stresses that you're going through by yourself, you know, and you're not, you're not crazy. You are, maybe you're sick or maybe you're just tired of it all, or maybe you just don't know where to turn or you're feeling old and, um, and that's all a state of mind. It's all really, truly, it's all a choice. You know, we might be old and I'm right there with you. But for me, I choose not to think about that. I choose not to dive into that train of thought and stay there. You know, there, there's definitely some fleeting thoughts in there and some worry and whatever, you know, I see things, um, you know, the, the body gets a little bit different, you know, with the lines and whatever, but you know, I, um, I can't, I can't invest my time and my thought into that. You know, this is a natural progression, I, I suppose. Um, and so I have to, I have to appreciate that at least I've gotten to the point where I can grow those lines, right? <laughs> that, that at least I'm at that age where I'm, I'm able to do that because I, I think when I was younger, I probably didn't even think I was going to make it to this age. So <laughs> I don't know, I guess with that, just, you know, look for the, look for the humor in, in your life. Look for the things that bring you the joy. Look for the things that make you want to get up, make you want to, um, do things, you know, to, to go out and have fun and smile and laugh and just be yourself. You know, that's all, that's what we're here to do is to be ourselves and to enjoy our lives. So, um, yeah, so, you know, getting that letter today, cause I was, I was retested, um, you know, I had a, had the test done and and it was came back normal, and that's the second one I've been able to. So the the last one that I did was many years ago, and I refused to go back. I did. I was scared. I didn't want to know. Um, I figured I was pushing my luck, and that you know if it was going to happen, it was going to happen, and I didn't need to know about it. <laughs> so I stopped going. I don't recommend that. Um, so the last test I got done was, was normal as well. And I had pasted that on my refrigerator and I was super happy and proud. And I was glad that I had made the choices that I had made. And some of them were very difficult, but I was proud of myself. And so I put that on the refrigerator and I, you know, it was a good reminder to continue to go. Well, somewhere along the line within my moves, I, I lost that letter and, you know, um, put that all to the side. And of course the doctors are at me, you need to go get tested. You need to get tested. And, Several years go by, and I finally gave in this year, and I said, okay, I'll go. And so I did, and I'm so glad that it came back normal. And it's not without its stress because it was it was always very, very hard for me to go back. In fact, just to, talking about it makes my voice crack because it's a scary thing. Um, but when I went back, it was easier this time. And I, I don't really know why or how to explain that, but I feel better. I feel healthier. I feel good. Um, I didn't have a knowing that it would be back, that it would be normal, but I was hoping that everything that I was feeling inside was, and the things that I was investing for in my life was going to prove that, that this can be turned around and that, um, and that, that it was going to be okay. And I got the letter today and it was fine. It came back normal and I'm just like so relieved, you know. So it's back on my refrigerator. <laughs> I'm, um, you know, I don't know. I'm just going to leave it there for a while and enjoy that moment. And just remember, because it's a reminder for me. So every morning, you know, when I get up and I pass that refrigerator, I can now look at that and remind myself like, I'm okay. 
you know, I'm okay and it's okay. Life is okay. And I, and I can enjoy it today. And I think having those reminders, just little things that make you appreciate every breath, every moment, every day is really important. And I don't know what that is for you. For me, it's that letter. And for me, it's, you know, just making a difference in people's lives and, and helping others be able to succeed is important. And, and like I said, little adventures here and there are great. Um, I have a great life and I have a great family and I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to change any of it. You know, I appreciate, I appreciate everything that has happened in my life to get me to where I'm at now, even the bad stuff. Although I would not want to go through that again. And I wouldn't wish that on anybody ever, but, um, but it did take me where I needed to be, which is here. And, still appreciating every moment and I hope and pray that you know you 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 take the those moments to learn a little bit more about about nature and how nature can support you and how um you know being being positive and grateful how that can support you you know your body mind and your soul because those things are the only things that matter because without any of them, you have nothing. So you really have to spend that time, excuse me, you really have to spend that time to, um, to invest in yourself. And, and that doesn't mean ignore everything else in your life. It doesn't. Um, but it does mean that you have to put yourself as an important matter and don't just waste those hours, those days, the, the months, the years and say, okay, well, I'll take care of that later. You know, this person needs this or this child needs this and my company needs this. And you just keep putting yourself off, putting yourself off and putting yourself off. Don't do what I did. It doesn't end well <laughs> because God will eventually slap the crap out of you and make you stop. He did me. And uh, I'm glad he did, but it was a hard, it was a hard, um, it was a hard lesson and a hard path. So if I can help you not go through that hard path, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> anyway, all right. Enjoy your day. Have a good night.